Hi friends, welcome. Today I want to talk about the value of obsession and dedication. And to do that, I want to call in the example that is the band, OK Go. Very quickly, update, you may notice that I've switched back to my studio mic. I've been using my Rode mic, which is incredibly easy to shoot with, and it's, it's a pretty fantastic mic, but I've been unable to achieve the buttery, rich, velvety vocal tones that I love, so I decided I'm going to switch back to this guy, and I'm excited for how it's going to turn out. OK Go is a band that is known for their catchy music, uh, insanely elaborate videos that are shot in a one-take format. They have a quirky uniqueness and cleverness about them. I've also noticed that their lyrics, if you listen to them, some of them tend to have, they tend to really feel like they have deep meaning to them. There's one of their uh, video, one of their songs at the end where they say, let it go, this too shall pass. And I just, I think that's wonderful. And then it, it's, it's singeth in a way that's very catchy and easily rememberable. That's a good way to get ideas into people's heads, you know? I'm pretty sure that they actually, all of their videos are actually shot in a one-take capacity. Meaning, it might take them a hundred tries to do it correctly, but from beginning to end, it is a continuous experience. And I think this is so fascinating. I think that they are such an incredible uh, collection of artists. They also have a a non-linearity to how their ideas come together, meaning that their ideas, the way that they, uh, the way that they manifest and turn into a final thing that we engage with, feels very random and chaotic. And they pull it together in a way that is cohesive and beautiful and has the quirky and clever feel that we love from OK Go. For example, right at the one minute mark of the video for the song, The Writings on the Wall, you experience this. What's going on here? They also decided they would cut toast with a laser cutter. That was an idea. Another thing that they do that I think is interesting is they feature their camera guys in the videos from time to time. You'll see a mirror or some sort of reflective surface, and you can see the camera guy with the rig, and I think that's that's incredibly interesting. They're one of these bands who have a beautiful way of combining art forms in an orchestra of creation, the, the visual arts and the musical arts coming together in beautiful harmony. I came across a TED Talk where they broke down how they come up with ideas. And one of the the members spoke about how he was obsessed with playing parallax games when he was younger, and I guess still to this day, and how that leads into how he comes across the ideas that end up becoming a video. And he says that they don't, they don't, it doesn't feel like they think of their ideas. He says it feels like they find their ideas. We want to address this question that we get asked all the time, but we're, we really never come up with an adequate answer for it, and that is, how do we think of those ideas? Um, the videos are not all Rube Goldberg machines, by the way. Last year we did a dance in zero gravity, and once we set up uh, an obstacle course out of thousands of musical instruments in the desert and then played them by stunt driving a car through them, For one of the videos, we choreographed hundreds of people with umbrellas in an abandoned parking lot outside Tokyo, and then filmed them from a drone a half a mile in the air. So it's all of these ideas that people are curious about. And the reason we've had so much trouble describing how we think of these ideas is that it doesn't really feel like we think of them at all. It feels like we find them. And by way of explanation, well, I have... have a compulsive habit. I play parallax and perspective games with my eyes pretty much all the time. And it's something I've been doing since I was a teenager. And I think a big contributing factor may have been that this is how I decorated my high school bedroom. (laughs) And being a teenager, what I did in there, of course, was just talk on the phone for staggering amounts of time. And so I was in this like visual maelstrom, just pretty much usually sitting in one place. And I guess just the overload in general, I'm, my, my brain kind of tried to make sense of it, and I would 
you know, if I could move my head off to one side a little bit, like the edge of the desk would line up just perfectly with that poster on the opposite wall. Or if I put my thumb out, I could close first my left eye and then my right, and my thumb would bounce back and forth between Jimi Hendrix's left eye and his right. <laughs> It's, it was not like a conscious thing, of course. This is just kind of the equivalent of doodling while you're talking, and it's still something I do all the time. This is my wife, Kristen, and it's, yeah. <laughs> Woo! And it's not uncommon that we are out at dinner and in the middle of a great conversation, then she'll just stop mid-sentence. And when she stops is when I realize that I'm the one who's acting weird because I'm like bobbing and weaving. And what I'm trying to do is get that ficus back there to stick out of her head like a ponytail. <laughs> Now, the point of telling you all this is that this, for me, this is what it feels like to have an idea. It's like they're made of these disparate parts, these disparate chunks sort of floating out there. And if you're receptive and you're observant, and crucially, if you're in exactly the right place, you can get them to just ding, line up. He mentioned that a method that they use for coming up with ideas is to put themselves in a, a sandbox for idea creation, where ideas can find them. And they will sometimes use a lot of resources up front to put themselves in these sandboxes. For example, they decided they would go spend some time in what it, uh, a plane affectionately called the vomit comet, and this is where they do those zero gravity tests. Let's do something in one of those zero gravity airplanes, but then instead of actually trying to sit there and think out what that something is, we spent a full third of our budget getting in an actual vomit comet and bouncing off the walls for a week. So this may seem to you like, like testing, but it's, it, it really isn't, because at this point we don't yet know what our idea is. We don't have a plan to be testing. So we're just, we're just playing. We're just, we're just trying everything we can think of because we need to get this idea space filled up with a chaos like the one in my high school bedroom. Because then if we can do like the bob and weave thing, if we, can, if we can put our thumbs up and get just a few things to line up, chances are no one else has ever made those same things line up before. And when we're done with that project, people will ask us again how we thought of that idea, and we'll be stumped because from our perspective, it doesn't feel like we thought of it at all. It just feels like we found it. They essentially put themselves in a creative box, or in this case, a jet-fueled flying tube, and they try to be receptive to the ideas that are floating around them in that space. They'll grab this idea from over here, maybe attach it to this idea. They grab this one from up here, put it on top, and that becomes the videos we end up seeing in the end. I also think that they're an example of embracing oddness and marketing themselves to the people who get it, being okay with not everybody getting it. I can imagine when they're thinking of these ideas and saying them out loud, they sound absurd and ridiculous, so they have to believe in themselves. Uh, Seth Godin has a lot of thoughts about marketing yourself only to the people who get it. He uses the term... Uh, marketing yourselves to the people who, quote unquote, get the joke. So if you're a musician and you put a song into the world and a critic comes and angrily denounces it, is it because the song wasn't good enough? Probably not. The, the real reason is because uh, for that person on that day, it wasn't the right answer. Right. And what we have to do, you know, Bob just won the Nobel Prize. Bob Dylan is the single most criticized musician in history. Right? Bob Dylan has been vilified and attacked and booed <laughs> off stage more than any other musician in history. Right. Yeah. Everyone complains they can't understand a word right. he says. So yeah. does he need diction lessons? Does he need guitar lessons? It's neither of those things. What he needs to do is keep doing that work that matters to him and to the people who get the joke. It's never for everybody, but it might be for someone. You've told me that story before about um, Zig Ziglar, who told you, you know, What do you do if that person in the front row is not paying attention? Can you kind of relive that a little bit for us right here? Sure. Well, Zig was my teacher from afar for many years. And I, I listened to all 72 hours of the tapes over and over again until I wore them out three mm -hmm. times. And one time I got booked to give a speech and Zig was there. It was me and Zig and Mia Hamm uh, and Ger Gerald Ford. And it was the four of us. It was 20, Eclectic group. <laughs> Eclectic group. 22,000 people in Milwaukee. Wow. Okay. And so backstage... You know, I'm young, he's not. And I, I, I turn to him and I say, so what do I do? There's that guy, he's always in the fourth row. He's asleep. He's not getting it. 
and you're standing up there and you're aiming your force of will at him and you're doing what you can. And I can't do Zig's voice anymore, but Zig turned to me and he said, he's not there for you and you can't be there for him. What about all the other people who are leaning in? What about all the other people who are listening? Don't take from them for that guy, right? You're there for them. Transformed not just my speaking, it transformed everything because I don't look for new readers. I don't look for new audience members. If it's not for you, totally fine. Seth often speaks to the idea of shunning the non-believers, that you should focus your work on the people who truly care, who are truly loyal, who truly get what you're trying to do. They look at what you're doing and they say, I understand that and I like that. And also, if you're doing something scary and people don't believe in your idea, it often means you are doing something truly creative and risky. And history shows that risky people get stoned. So just be happy that you don't live in the Middle Ages. So what can we learn from OK Go as a band? I think this idea that they put themselves in a space that's conducive to finding ideas and that they are willing to allocate resources up front to do this. In their case, this was making phone calls and ending up on a, a plane that will allow them to fly in zero-G uh, experiences. In your case, it could just mean dedicating more time to putting yourself in intentional spaces for inspiration. I use conversations as a live space for introducing entropy into into my life and letting that come letting those ideas come together in a way that would not come together if it was just me sitting here. Now I use my notes for when I don't have the person. But if you're if you're having a conversation with somebody, the amazing thing is you're going to say something, they're going to react to it in only the way that they would react to it. And this is inspiring and you can create really beautiful organic experiences from this. I'm just ready for the father-son bonding that's going to occur there. I just picture you guys playing, you know, love lifts us up where we belong. <laughs> and you guys are just looking in each other's eyes the whole time. I think that would be a really special moment. No, my my dad and I are not the like lovey dovey type. You will be after this. <laughs> Putting yourself in a conducive space could also be surrounding your senses with a space that is conductive for electric inspirational thought or something like that. Uh, music, a film, an art gallery, a nice coffee shop, nature, creative friends. Mushrooms. Everybody has their things. This is Central Control. This is Central Control. You get this feeling when you watch OK Go that they're pursuing authentically something that they care about for the love of music and art. And that's, that's a breath of fresh air. And they're incredibly, they seem to be incredibly organized and resourceful and teamwork focused. The song The One Moment is about those incredible moments in life when you feel most alive. The moment you fall in love or the moment you make a big decision. And so we wanted to shoot the whole video in just one moment. So we're doing all these tests to see w what looks really beautiful in really slow motion. You know, like what's the yeah that would burst out of them. And now they fall on me. We spent about a month just like going every day to the effects shop to Kelly's world of bursting things. Spray paint rig is in the same scene as this, ideally. Uh -huh. So I would like to have this camera there, human, as close to this as is, as is safe. It's somewhere in this world. Somewhere in this area? Yeah, we'll, okay, we'll do another cool. test Back before to, I didn't mean to stop you. We've got a much better sense of, of how those things feel emotionally. Every single event had to have an exact time. We literally have a spreadsheet with the frame number in the video. Like this is frame 2416. Each of those corresponds to a, an actual millisecond of real time when we're shooting. Bang! <laughs> What's gonna happen, Tim? There's gonna be an explosion in your ear and right at the same time you need to yell, obody, 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 and then like, yeah. and, and you know, it doesn't make any sense in the room. But Tim's pretty good at practicing these things and, and looking like he knows what he's doing. I look like a really amateur magician or something. <laughs> when you watch these behind the scenes videos, you see a lively and positive environment. 
you see an environment that's based around competence. They they put people around them that can pull this thing off well, and them 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 as a band, they have to spend an enormous amount of time figuring out how to do something, how to make everything feel seamless and cohesive and nice. They're as much actors as they are musicians, right? And these environments of of a, of a positive atmosphere with people working together, they don't always create themselves. This is something that you have to be intentional about a lot of times. And I also think it's interesting that the operation feels as small, but also as big as it needs to be. And I think that they are also endlessly diligent in what they're up to. Um, They're not scared of huge and intimidating ideas. Big ideas require you to be okay with experimenting uh, and failure. And it seems like they welcome that. They, they enjoy that process. And that pushes me. I, there are certain areas of my creative life where I am scared of experimentation, putting in the time and uh, the negative emotion that can be associated with that. And they are brave enough to pursue these ideas that they have from the beginning when nothing makes sense. And when I say brave, I don't mean like soldier brave. I mean modern artist brave, modern artist that lives in LA and goes, you know, goes to Starbucks uh, on the, every morning. Uh, this is why I talk about comfort zone so much to get us to get up and actually start the process of doing things that scare us. And it, it's so easy to become complacent with our ideas. It's, it's probably really easy for them, it would be easy for them, to be in the middle of shooting one of these videos and go, this is good enough, this is fine. <laughs> Why can't we just shoot a normal music video for once, right? So anyway, in conclusion, I think the biggest difference between people who carry out their ideas successfully and those who don't is step one. But sometimes it's also step 9,000, choosing not to give up when that comes around and it's really difficult and you get stuck, right? Either way, the next step is always the next step. So with that said, I'm curious where you guys feel like you get stuck in terms of your steps and how you can overcome that. That is it for this one. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know if you like this video by hitting the like button. Goodbye.